Welcome to Specific Love. Here in our garage, we have some nice heavy duty shelving that the previous owners put up. It works great and we can store a bunch of heavy items on it. Over here, they put a nice heavy duty cabinet in here that we can add a bunch of things. I've actually added some pegboard here so we can hang some things in the front, but on the back side, we're very limited. Let me show you how. All right, here is the back of the cabinet. Looking at this and the broad picture, it looks like these were originally shelves that ran all the way across and that the cabinet was an afterthought. But in either case, the cabinet's an awesome feature and I want to keep it. So we're going to want to add a nice layer of wood across here so we can add some French cleats to give everything uh, just some additional spacing to hang tools. To do that first, I need to reinforce this, so let's get started on that. Now down here on the lower shelf, I want to brace this just a little bit more just to give it some more strength. On both ends of the cabinet, it already has some bracing, but I want to put one right here in the middle and that should limit any warping over time. Now whenever you're putting wood on a concrete floor, it's a good idea to use pressure treated wood. In my case, I'm not going to because of two reasons. One, the rest of the wood out there is not pressure treated. It's a very climate controlled garage, so I'm not too concerned. And two, pressure treated does tend to shrink a little bit over time as it dries out. And I prefer this to say it's full length. Now to hold this piece in place, I'm going to use pocket screws. I don't have easy access to the back, so that would just be the easiest and quickest way to do it. Now for the rest of these boards, I'm actually gonna be using a two by six. Yeah, two by six is major overkill for this kind of setup, but I'm gonna use it for two reasons. One, I found this on the discount pile. Take a look at your discount pile at your local hardware store. You can get a good discount on wood that is relatively usable. In this case, it definitely will be. Also, I'm gonna be ripping this down on the table saw, so it'll be more like a two by three. So with those two reasons, that's why we're gonna use this. I have all my boards set up at 16 inch centers. That's the normal stud width in the walls, so keep that in mind when you're building one. Now for the wall in this setup, I'm gonna be using some half inch birch plywood. Yeah, it is definitely overkill for this setup, but it's what I already have on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. You can always use some OSB or MDF or whatever works, but just stick with at least half inch so it doesn't have a lot of flex. Now that we're holding this up, I'm gonna put just a few brad nails in. It'll just be a temporary hold so we can add the screws. Now remember when you're putting the screws in, we wanna add a slight countersink so that the head of the screw doesn't stick above the surface, otherwise it could interfere with the tools. Next up is painting this wall. I'm gonna be painting it white. Yes, I know the wood on it's already pretty, but I want white to help everything stand out, especially the French cleats that I'm going to be staining. I'm also gonna be painting some of these rails over here. We want as much white in here that will be reflective from any lights that we already have in the garage, just to make it a little bit brighter and cleaner looking. Now while that paint's drying, I'm gonna start cutting down the cleats. In my case, I'm gonna be using some one by four furring strips. Yes, furring strips are usually not very good quality, but I got fortunate. When I went to my local home improvement store, they just put out a brand new stack of these. So I could find a lot of them that were good quality and straight. So keep an eye out for those at your local store because these run probably about a third of the normal price that you would find for similar quality wood. And as always, everything will be cut to a 45 degree angle. Now that the board that we put up is 48 inches and these are 96 inches, we're going to cut these right in half and it should fit perfect across the board. Now to help remove some of these splinters and just reduce injury in the future, it's a good idea just to go over all the edges gently with some sandpaper. Now on each of these cleats I'm going to be putting some cherry stain and that should really set it off and just make it pop against that white background. Now that we've given everything some time to dry, we want to pre-drill these holes to prevent any cracking or splitting in the future. Now remember we're doing these on 16 inch center, so it should be relatively easy just to measure it out and make the holes. Now I got a little bit of a splinter when I was drilling these out, but that's okay. I'm going to be using a countersink so I can get this just below the surface so the screw doesn't come in contact with any of the tools. Now when you're starting to install the cleats, it's a good idea to start with the bottom cleat first. 
And if by chance you have room, you can always clamp them in place and then put the screws in so there's no movement. And don't forget to use a level so that you can make sure everything is nice and level. Now when you're putting up your second cleat, if you can use a spacer on each side, when you put this one up and all additional cleats, you know the spacing between these will be exactly the same. And once these are secure, you can then start adding your French cleat hangers. Oh yeah. Now that's a great way to add French cleats to an existing shelf, or in my case, the back of the cabinet. Either way, getting your tools up off the floor, up on your wall, you can easily see them, is a great way to have easy access, and so you know exactly what you have. If you don't have room on the facing of your shelf, let me show you how to add it to the ends. All right, here's the end of the same pair of shelves. In this case, I used some half inch MDF and some smaller cleats. I plan on some smaller cleats because I don't plan on putting as much weight on the end as I do on the facing, but in either case, you can do what works for you. Now, if you're new to French cleats, I have a series of videos that have made over 100 different items of French cleats that you can see in my workshop, just to give you ideas for your tools and whatever you might have. So I'll put a link to those in the description below, so make sure you check those out. Otherwise, get out in your shop and have fun building. That's because, yeah, try to Same set of shelves. In this case, I use no, I just, bleh, items, blah, dude, in the case, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's try that again.